Dear students, how are you? Hope that everyone is in good and sound health by the grace of Almighty Allah and of course is in touch with your academic study. Like you know the whole world has been passing a very crucial time due to the outbreak of the virus COVID-19. The schools are shut everywhere. The whole world, the schools are shut in an effort to limit the spread of this virus. And you are at home, but the days are passing on. So when school reopens, you'll have to sit for the exam. So what to do? You'll have to be in touch with your study. And Amar Ghore Amar School is an initiative taken by our government to keep our students in touch with their teachers so that they don't miss waste their time, so that they can complete their syllabus, so that they can learn. And when school reopens, they can sit for the exam. Okay, so welcome to our today's class. I will teach you English 1, EFT book, class 19. Today, I will teach you Unit 6, Lesson 1. Okay, Unit 6, Lesson 1, it is on page number 70. See, can you see on page number 70 some pictures? What are the pictures? I can see some flags. Yes, these are the flags. Flags means the identity of countries. So, first one is the flag of Bhutan. Second one, tricolor. Yes, this is India. And then third one is Pakistan, fourth one is Nepal, and fifth one is Sri Lanka. So it, flags, flags simply carries the identity of each or every nation, right? So we'll start with the first lesson, that is Nepal, the land of Everest. See the subtitle, the land of Everest. The subtitle tells us about that these land, Nepal or this country, Nepal has the highest mountain in the world. Learning outcomes. What we will learn after going through this lesson? What we will be, we be able to finish or complete when we'll be done with this lesson, okay? Yes, when we'll be done with this lesson, we will learn some meaning of new words, ask and answer questions. You will be able to understand the passage okay then you will be able to read travel and talk about different interesting places of that country english is not our language you have been learning it for as it is a necessity but we when we just read we don't know it, the meaning of all words but if we know the meaning of the keywords we can just understand it that's why the meaning of new words okay see first word the meaning is sublime which means of very great excellence or beauty number two is monsoon monsoon means what monsoon means rainy season number three drench drench means wet thoroughly number four temperate temperate means mild or moderate then climate what does climate mean climate means weather pattern or weather condition then slope slope means plant then peak, peak means the highest position of anything, rural, rural means countryside or pastoral. Then one million, one million, one million is equal to 10 lakh. Demographic, demographic means relating to the structure of population. Then harmony, harmony means balance, century means 100. So 100 years make a century. And then sacred, sacred means holy, shrine, shrine means altar or church. And epitome, epitome means a written term. Epitome means a summary of written work. Elegant, elegant means graceful or stylish. Refined, refined means polished. Nepal, the land of Everest this is the lesson title. First one is known as the land of Everest. Nepal is one of the most charming countries in Asia. The kingdom of Nepal is a small land of sublime beauty. It has some of the world's best and very important temples. Temples, of course, temple is a place. This is related to religion, right? Okay. It has some of the world's best and very important temples. And it is a country that is rich in scenic beauty and cultural heritage. Okay. So the first passage, what is the first passage tells about? The first passage tells about the natural beauty of Nepal. Okay. Passage B. Nepal lies between India and the Tibetan part of China. This small country has an area of 147181 square kilometers. Southern Nepal is tropical low land known as the Terai Plains. This part of Nepal has hot summers and warm winters. 
here the temperatures rise, reach up to 40 degrees Celsius in April and May, and monsoon rains drench this region from June to September. Okay. The next sentence is it also tells about the climate of Nepal. Okay. So if you just go through, you will find that every sentence al almost talks about the climate of Nepal. Okay. So now we'll move to the next. The population is primarily rural. Uh, Kathmandu, the capital city, has less than 1 million inhabitants. Nepal's demographic features are complicated not only by dozens of ethnic groups. So in total, there are 103 castes and ethnic groups living in the small country. The two largest of such groups are known as Chetri and Bahun. Then others include Magar, Tharu, and Tamang. Newer Muslim, Gorang, and Damai, about 40% of the people speak Nepali. Among other languages spoken are Maithali, Bhojpuri, Tharu, and Tamang. It is a small land, but it has, like, see, a different dozens of ethnic groups. Nepal is the holy land of Lord Pushapatinath and Gautam Buddha, where the Hindus and Buddhists have lived together in harmony for centuries. The temple of Poshaputinath is the most sacred Hindu shrine and one of the four most important sites in the world for Shiva worshippers. See the words, sacred means what? Sacred means holy, okay? And shrine means what? Shrine means temple or like church. See, here, Lord Buddha, the light of Asia, was born in Lumbini in Nepal's southern plains, which makes this a sacred pilgrimage destination for the Buddhists as well. Do you know what does the word pilgrimage mean? Pilgrimage is a place where religious people visit to perform their religious rituals. Suppose for Muslims, people go to Makkah to perform holy hajj, that is their pilgrimage, right? Place that are practiced in Nepal by people who live in Nepal, Nepalese people, okay. Number E, the Kathmandu Valley is the richest cultural heritage center of Nepal. The three ancient cities of the valley, Patan, Kathmandu and Bhaktapur, represent an epitome of harmony in urban design, elegant architecture and refined culture. Refined means what? Polished, polished, okay. These cities are famous for religious monuments, unequal in the world. The seven monument zones situated within the valley have been named as World's Heritage Site by UNESCO. Number F, the last passage of this lesson. Many festivals are add dazzling color to Nepal's vibrant culture, which are celebrated throughout the year. So Nepal, it has its vibrant culture, but the festivals that they celebrate, the people celebrate, it also add dazzling color to it, okay? And see, the sun or Dashera is celebrated nationwide in October. Okay, and this is the most important of all Nepalese celebrations and includes the biggest animal sacrifice of the year. This is celebrated in November. Other festivals include the Holi and Chaitra Darsan. Some Hindu festivals are the Buddhist celebrations too, and those include, include Maniridam, Buddha Jayanti, and Loser, which marks the Tibetan New Year. Climate that varies from place to place. Which passage talks about climate? Passage number B. Good. This is passage number B that talks about climate. So number one will go with passage B. Say number two, a land of religious coexistence. We have just already just read passages. In one passage, there are talks about multi-religious practices. Nepalese people. They are multi-religious people and they practice in their own way in harmony. So we, we, what is that passage? What is the number of that passage? Yes, that is number D. Okay, now move to the next item. A land of high peaks and Everest. So small country with huge population. A blend of natural beauty and cultural heritage. Natural beauty and cultural heritage, okay? This is a blending, a combination. So which passage tells about that? Can you remember? Yes, I can remember. Of course, you can remember passage number A, paragraph A, that talks about natural beauty. Now, the temples of Nepal. Temples, I have told that temples are the places that is associated with religious practice, right? Many occasions to celebrate. There are many occasions 
just few minutes back i was just telling i was talking about that nepal it has a vibrant culture and different occasions add color to it right so what is the passage number the passage number is if the last one of this lesson so a rich spot of cultural heritage number eight this is the heading a rich spot of cultural heritage and these one will go with which number passage cultural heritage can you remember just give a quick look back what is written in number e passage does it match does it talk about cultural heritage yes it talks about cultural heritage okay and number last nine number is a small population with huge diversity diversity means what diversity means variety okay it's a small country but here are varieties of variety types of people heading will go with number c passage fine so we are done with this part like list of headings and we'll move to the next item that is mcq multiple choice questions that is on page number 73 and question number c see every for each phrase below choose the meaning that is closest to the meaning used in the passage what is a phrase phrase is a group of words that doesn't have any verb find the closest meaning that goes with the given phrase and that is of course used in the passage okay so first one is tropical lowland it's a phrase what is phrase quick yes what is phrase phrase means group of words that doesn't have any verb verb means finite verb just if you for think about verb that is fine like that doesn't have any verb group of words that doesn't have any verb is called phrase so far phrase is tropical lowland and we have four options yes four options first one is an area of land having humid climate a land situated on the hill a lowland close to river a land that lies at the foot of a hill which one is the closest meaning what what do you think in mcq per we are at number two where the phrase is temperate climate can you remember the word meaning that was in the least temperate what does it mean temperate means moderate okay so see the options are here a weather condition of high temperature a moderate climate so go to number three three is ethnic groups ethnic groups what are the options for us first option groups based on their religious faiths b groups of people living in the hill tracts c groups having distinct racial and cultural features d groups who believe in buddhism closest one is number c we'll move to number four pilgrimage destination first option is a sacred place where people travel to perform religious rites b a historical place with many old buildings c a tourist spot of great scenic beauty d the birthplace of a famous person so first one is the correct answer a sacred place already I told and of course i i believe that you have just chosen the correct one a sacred place where people travel to perform religious rites okay uh, last one elegant architecture elegant architecture we have same way four options first one is temples of gods graceful work of buildings perhaps buildings of historical importance well-designed area of cultural acts so elegant architecture so we have already got the four options and our correct option is c buildings of historical importance so we have finished our mcq part now we'll move to number e package tour advertisement return air ticket with bangladesh airport taxes and Kathmandu departure taxes departure means what what does departure mean departure means departure is noun what is the verb verb is depart depart means to leave okay so when you will leave Kathmandu, you will have to pay some taxes and that taxes will be covered by the package tour okay two nights accommodation in Kathmandu two nights accommodation in Pokhara, buffet, daily breakfast and dinner. See, only breakfast and dinner, beginning and ending, no in between meal or food, okay? Same, both way airport transfers in Kathmandu, Kathmandu Pokhara, Kathmandu by AC bus, half day sightseeing in Kathmandu Valley is true or false, okay? Of course, we are given the information on page number 74. So first, 
statement the package includes the cost of traveling from Kathmandu airport to the hotel in Kathmandu true or false what does the package to tell yes it is true okay number b the tourists will be provided with breakfast lunch and dinner will they be provided does the package cover three meals or what i have said beginning and ending no in between meal so it is false they will be provided only the beginning that is breakfast and dinner no in between i mean no lunch fine then number c the tourists do not have to pay extra for a half day sightseeing in Kokra. Sightseeing, what else? Sightseeing means you will see the countryside in Nepal. Okay, so it is true. D, the tour op operators will bear all visa related cost. Will they cover all related visa related cost, or they will only cover the taxes? Dip, like that is what taxes? Departure taxes. Number E, the tourists will go to Pokhara from Kathmandu by domestic airlines flights. They will be provided AC bus. Okay, so this is again false statement. Now it is time to recap what we have learned. What we have learned after finishing this lesson. Okay, we have learned, of course, what we have learned. We have learned some new words that are important to understand or comprehend this passage. We have learned about the country in Nepal. So our today's homework is lesson one unit six page number 74 exercise d so till the next class goodbye stay well stay safe and take care <laughs>